Hello everyone, this is Pastor Joey Rogers and welcome to Prophecy File Briefing. We're glad that you've joined us today. I hope you'll share this out. I'm in Washington, D.C. today and we're about to step into our senator's offices to speak to them concerning uh, a major topic, major issue that's taking place, the state of Israel and the support of the Jewish people. As a member of Christians United for Israel, along with 2,000 others that have just hit the hill, uh, to go to uh, speak to the congressmen and to our senators about this issue. It's also being met with great protests that you've seen from around the country. So I want to encourage you, whatever you do, to pray earnestly for Israel, pray for the uh, peace of Jerusalem, especially in the time when just a few days ago, just like in the backyard, uh, there were several children that were killed by a Hamas rocket. It's so important for us to be able to not only stand with Israel, but uh, speak up. This is a time for us not to be silent. For Israel's sake, for Zion's sake, I will not be silent. So this is very important for us to do. Remember this from Genesis 12, that those that bless Israel, God will bless. Those that curse Israel or trifle with Israel, they will be cursed. This is a time when it's important for America to stand. And I encourage you today to take hold of the word of God, stand with the nation of Israel and the Jewish people. And in doing so, you're gonna find yourself blessed along with your entire household to a thousand generations. Thank you for joining us for Prophecy Files Briefing today. I'll be back with more. These all are the signs of the times that we're living in. And I encourage you to be able to stand up, speak up, and be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. God bless you today for joining us. Till the next time, remember Jesus Christ is coming soon. The argument for years has been the separation of church and state attempting to silence the church from the very beginning. But let's get the record straight, read it for yourself. This wall of separation was not that government, was meant to be that government would not intrude the church and dictate to the church what it was supposed to do or not. Boy, did we violate that one during COVID. But see, if you don't know what your rights are and you don't understand what is to be said, then you'll allow any, uh, ch any kind of individual to just tell you this is the way it's going to be and you roll over. It's about time you educate yourself in the word and in the documents that make you free before you lose your freedom. Thomas Jefferson wrote that to the Danbury Baptist to make sure that the government would not intrude the church. But what he did not say was that the church cannot speak to government and the issues of the day. That's where we've got it all messed up. Because when the pastors and churches were the ones that were speaking to the halls of Congress and the government, things were in order like they should be. Was it perfect? Absolutely not. But there was a nation of believers who honored one another, honored the authority of God in his word, and it became a society blessed of God. Thomas Jefferson had been made into some kind of anti-God, nominal, non-religious kind of seeker of sanitizing government from God, but that's not true. Let me tell you the truth. He attended worship services every week, not in a church, in statuary hall in the middle of Congress, they hold worship services from 1800 to 1869. And at no time, did he ever suggest that it was wrong to have services there or he never spoke against the Marine Corps band who led the worship services playing songs that honored God. <laughs> Psalm 9 and verse 17 says, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Listen carefully to Psalm 78. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable, the psalmist said. I will utter dark sayings of old. I'll tell the stories from the past, which you have heard and known and our fathers have told us. Listen, we will not hide them from their children, showing to the next generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he has done. For he established a testimony in Jacob, and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make known to their children. Are you hearing me? This is the first classroom right here. That the generations to come might know them, even the children, listen, which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children. 
that they might set their hope in God. Why did he say tell those stories over? Rehearse it one generation to the next. That they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God and keep his commandments. Listen, and not be like their fathers. A stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright, whose spirit was not steadfast in God. We have silent pastors and silent pews. We have a nation that has forgotten the blessings of God. And we're at a place, number three, where we're forsaking biblical truth for social acceptance. This past week, Facebook decided to expunge me off of my prophecy file briefing that said, Israel, we stand with you. Israel, you're not alone. That's what we put. And they said, your statement, your information here is being removed because you're associating yourself with dangerous people. Well, if my association with Israel is dangerous, I'd rather be on the side of Israel who is on the side of God than to be standing with the heathen when judgment comes.